my master's right now working on my thesis in art and fashion, specifically Alexander McQueen. So I'm working on that. Um, but I also have been a part of the art world through my husband who uh, curated this show for 18 years now. So my love of art started way back then and it kind of created a passion inside of me seeing all his stuff, reading his stuff, being a part of his stuff. So a few years ago, I kind of decided to take that on as my own thing. So um, I'm excited to be here with these ladies and um, we're gonna start by just quick introductions, kind of um, who you are and how you got started, however you feel like you want to start this. And uh, Shadow Monster Bear, would you like to start? Sure. <laughs> um, hi, to right next to me. I'm Shadow Monster Bear, and I've been painting forever, but with spray paint for the past four years. And I paint mostly murals of very large, cute animals. And I, a couple of years ago, I was between jobs and saw the street art graffiti around town and realized I want to do that. And I said, I can do this. And I went out and I got spray paint, got some canvases, and it turned out horribly at first. <laughs> and then I kept with it and kept practicing and met people and sh started showing my art. And it was well received, and then I started painting more and selling it, and now I mostly do murals. But it's been a wonderful, it's been a wonderful thing to get started so late as a professional artist and have such a nice welcoming. And so that is who I am and what I do and how much I appreciate all of you being here and being supportive. Can you share why your shadow work? Like this, where it came from, or is that more like? I wanted an art name. I didn't want to go by my name. Um, I wanted an art name. But I also didn't want a serious graffiti name that would mislead people and have them be kind of shocked when I showed up and was me. I was like, hey guys, I'm going to make cartoons now. And so I wanted something cute and fun and reflective of me. And the monster is my dog's name. Some of you have heard. <laughs> the monster is my dog's name, and Shadow and Bear are my mom's dog and my dad's dog. That when I was deciding on whether to use that as a name, they both passed away within a week of each other. And so that was special to me, and I thought I would kind of take that with me. And for about a year and a half, I couldn't say, hi, I'm Shadow Monster Girl, without that would <laughs> And it still makes other people giggle, so I thought it was worth it. Uh, my name is Jennifer Corson. I've been an artist um, pretty much forever. I've always made art. Um, showing for about, or since 2008, and doing street art since 2012. So super new to it. Um, I got into it after it was cool. I um, I just kind of, I was at art shows and meeting a lot of artists. I started meeting some street artists and was kind of like encouraged to start stickering and all that stuff. And then it just kind of like froze from there. I mean, you put stickers up and people, like all of a sudden people care, you know, and they're taking pictures of them and posting them and people like know my art blogs are posting them. And it just kind of escalated from there. It was, it was really well received and it was just like Nikki said, it was really uh, it was really great to be accepted and to like a community and people all of a sudden wanted me to paint their things and were offering me different kinds of shows and I was meeting all these amazing artists um, and getting mentored by these amazing artists and it's just been a really amazing journey. And yeah, I'm so proud. Hi, I'm C D Love. Um, I started about four years ago, pretty much going to art shows. Started off seeing it, started off doing stickers, um, writing positive messages. Um, I started off occupying, I did Occupy LA, and um, I just started off with an image like, of a little girl who I've seen, and she was um, holding a sign saying, We're all one. So I wanted to put a message out to people that is to let everybody know that we're all one. And 
I liked it and just going to art shows, meeting people, started acting stencils, started off my first stencil. I did the first little stencil and I thought it was so cool. I was all proud of it. I mean, they were pretty crappy, but I was proud of it. Um, started off doing then we pasting and then I moved from stickers, moved from starting postals to just hello, my name is stickers and started doing vinyl stickers. So my stickers, I had a process of my stickers. So I mean, I'm proud of that. So, um, <coughs> my street art, what I do is just, I like putting out positive messages and letting everybody know that just whatever I feel, I'll put out. So I don't do certain characters and draw certain <coughs> things. It's whatever I feel and want to let the people know, then that's what I do. That's actually exactly what it, I wanted to go into next. It's kind of like your own, you each have your own individual style, obviously, and, well, and I was hoping that you could talk about how exactly what you just shared kind of to me, <laughs> how you, you started, obviously, with your stencil and with putting a positive message and so then it created who you, who you were kind mm -hmm. of like that like so Jennifer what how did you did you always want to do your art or did that come up yeah. how did that process come um I started doing teeth actually I was doing these mixed media um, <laughs> shadow boxes I've always done a lot of anatomical art and um I was just doing different organs and mixed media paintings and all kinds of things and then uh, I did a series of teeth and then I did a couple hearts, and they're, they all sold, and I got really, like, I went, I started to do one, and then I was like, oh, I could do one like this, oh, I could do one like this, and then I, I've made over a hundred, like, shadow boxes of them, and I just think, I do them almost every day, it's kind of, um, so it did I, well, the heart did well, and so you The did heart it. did well, and it's like, I felt connected to it, and I felt like other people connected to it, and I think it's a really good template to, um, express something and I just obsessively make new ones and yeah it's universal and I've kind of made my own abstraction of an anatomical heart so for me it's kind of a branding thing also so I can tell my heart from a heart that anyone else makes because every artist makes hearts so it's kind of like can I set mine apart from others can I contain things in it can I expand it and how far can I go with it Cindy, I love how your stuff is because I, you know, not only am a girl, but I have a daughter that, you know, and she, she saw like even your board right away when she came into the show. And I think that that, that, it, it adds something different to what we've been, what we've been seeing. Do you have other stuff that? I do, like my character, my zombie. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's based on a video game that I play that I really enjoy. So, I mean, and it's also, it's pretty much, a, she's a zombie but you can also look still beautiful. So, I mean, and then my inner beauty ain't never needs makeup. It's like, we're all beautiful. So we all don't need to look a certain way to prove that we're beautiful because everybody's beautiful on the inside. And that's what everybody needs to understand. Shadow Whisperer? What about with your, your animals and your cartoon life? I hate cartoon animals. They used to be much more, uh, I guess graphic design, very cartoony, Ooh. like the seahorse on the wall. <laughs> and that started because as I was starting out, I asked my brother, who is 26 and just moved out to LA last week, mm -hmm. um, he, I was like, it's your birthday, I'm gonna paint you something, this is what I'm doing now, what do you want? And he said, I was like, I can do like graffiti things or cute animals. He said he wanted cute animals, and so I started doing that, and I didn't stop. I had so much fun painting them, and they were just well received, and people wanted me for children's nurseries, and it was a lot of fun. And then it, as I went on, I wanted to change what I was doing and change into a slightly more adult style, and then so I changed it to the melon walk on the wall. <laughs> So yeah, it's always been cartoon animals. I just got into it and kept doing it and loved doing it and have more just been evolving my style within those confines. So um, 
I guess the next thing I wanted to, um, along the lines of your work and stuff, do you think that when you're out on, on the street or when you're in a gallery, do you think that, do you want your work to come across as, I mean, we're all sitting up here as ladies, as feminine? Do you, do you think your work does? Do you care if it does? Do you want other people to know that you are a female artist? Does that matter at all to you? Do you think that that's important when you're out? Um, uh, or, I mean, and really, really and truly, honestly, like, do you want people, do you want your image to come across as that, or do you, do you think that's important? Um, I have really mixed feelings about it. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It really depends. Um, it's totally situational. I think that my hearts are feminine. I don't know if I necessarily consider myself super feminine, but, um, my work comes across that way, and that's fine. It's um, I don't want to be necessarily a female artist, and I want that always to be like a qualifier. But um, I also like, I mean, doing street art because it is male dominated, and it's like, okay, well, women can do this too, and women can hustle as hard as men and paint as well as men, and get the same opportunities, and use the same tools, and take the same risks, and um, yeah. So I don't know if it's the most important thing about it. Sometimes it. Um, you know, it can work against you, and sometimes it can work for you, so. Um, no, I mean, what I do, I mean, people sometimes, at first, people thought I was a guy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how do you guys think guys? A lot of guys actually like mm -hmm. and buy my stuff from the inner beauty in. It's like, the guys like it too. Mm -hmm. so it's not just about women, it's about guys too. So. I don't see myself as a I actually had the same experience as Sydney before. I've only recently started posting pictures of myself online with my art. And before I did that, people, I would actually meet people that would be like, you're a girl? I thought you were a guy. Or people would be like, I would post something from a show. I'd be like, that's really cool, bro. Good job. <laughs> and then I would just sit back and wait until somebody else would be like, um, Shadow Monster Bear's a girl. And I'd be like, that guy. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. But yeah, it's the same, same experience. And I also think that, how Jennifer was saying that with the street art, we can go out there and do it <coughs> as well. I think one thing that's interesting is that unless, unless you're doing something very masculine or very feminine, and even then, not necessarily, unless people know it's you and you built that into your brand, no one knows. Like, you can put something on the street, whether it's a mural, a sticker, a wee paste, and people just see the art. And if they don't know who you are, they are just judging the art. And I think that's kind of cool, because it doesn't matter who you are unless you want it to matter. That's absolutely, I, I don't think that's a great way to put it. Yes, I think that's cool. I think you should see it as a dog person. Um, so, do you, any of you have a story that you may be being out in the street or in a gallery that, that you can share, like, even with some of these young girls that are going to be, that are going to be artists right here in the front row, thank you girls for coming, like, that you've had, like, a neat experience that you've had being out there, or, I mean, maybe not the best experience being out, uh, actually, on, on doing a mural or doing just a small piece or doing a gallery piece. Um, <laughs> I pretty much do everything illegal. I never have asked for permission. So, I mean, I'm always just, my head on my shoulders. And sometimes people, I get away with it too because I'll be standing there and I'll put up stickers. I'll write something and they, they see a girl and they're like, oh, she's not doing nothing bad. But really, I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, that's pretty much just looking over all the time. I got hit up by some gang members um, a few months ago. I was painting a roll down um, in Silver Lake, and I had, had permission from the owner of the building. Um, they came up to me and were just like, kind of like, what are you doing? And that's, you know, just painting, and you need permission. And it just kind of went back and forth. And they're pretty, um, very assertive. I wouldn't say necessarily aggressive at first. And um, I mean, I talked to them, and I was like, okay, well, you know, I get that your neighborhood, like, are you okay with me painting this? And um, 
it was really scary for about five minutes and then you know I started kind of like trying to joke around with them and just be like kind of it's cool I'm not trying to do anything if you tell me to stop stop you know I'm not trying to cause problems or get involved in any like gang graffiti wars um, especially I use my real name I'm really easy to find so I'm not trying to cause problems or um, disrespect you know with their their whole deal um, but they, they told me again, like, you're really lucky you're a girl, you know, if you're a guy, we would have kicked your ass. And like, okay, so. That is kind of true, though. We have. <laughs> yeah. And we're different from guys. Like, you know, we get away with a lot of stuff. I mean, not really, but we can. Yeah. And that makes sense. You definitely, definitely did. And you said you had permission? I had permission from the owner of the building. Okay. But I mean, that was, okay. you know, from their name. Okay. Then they, you know, I asked them permission, and then um, they're like, okay, well, we'll, like, tag next to it, and then it'll be, like, protected. I was like, well, why don't you just like tag on it and sign it with me? And like they did. And so it was. Um, Were you by yourself? I was with a friend and um, who was like kind of like filming what I was doing and like watching my phone, filming myself. And he he's from the Midwest and was just kind of like, oh, hey guys, we have permission. And I was like, oh man. <laughs> I'll talk to them, it's cool. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was a positive experience overall. But there's also like a darker side. I mean, there's definitely like guys that try to um, be a little overbearing and objectify you. And um, there's the thing where like you'll get a gallery that's following you on social media and they only like your pictures of yourself and then of your art. And it's like, okay, cool, thanks. Um, so there's, but you can kind of do what you want with that. And, um, feel that that sort of thing makes you, empowers you, or brings you down a little bit? I think it can go both ways. I mean, I've had, in some ways, it's like, okay, cool, they're paying attention, and that's enough. Um, and sometimes it can be really aggressive and not okay. So um, I think it's important to kind of figure out where you stand and be assertive and stand up for yourself and not be bullied or bossed around by um, whatever the status quo is for street art. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was, it's a crazy world. Any fun experience with you? Uh, well, when you were asking Jennifer if she was at that alone, I that's kind of a logistical thing, is that I don't go paint things alone. It's, well, if I'm going to be on a ladder, mm. I don't paint things alone, I don't do it at night, because, and this, I don't know if this is a gender thing or just an anyone thing, but I've definitely had people come up to me I was painting a wall with Lucas one time, and I was the last one there, and he had just come out, and there was this guy that had come around the corner, and I'm up on the ladder, and he's talking to me, and talking to me, and talking, and I was like, okay, I need you to go. I need, we're not talking, we're done here. And uh, it was something where I was like, Lucas, you need to stay here with me. Just take me out. Just be here. So I find that that's kind of a logistical concern. Um, but I also think that I don't feel, I don't think I present myself intentionally or feel like a woman artist. I feel like an artist if someone comes at me in a good way or a bad way, I assume I try to analyze who they are as a person, what they have in their life, and why we are at, interacting on that level. And. Uh, I think that my being a woman kind of bleeds into having empathy in the way I conduct myself and the way I, the words I use and the way I speak to people. And I think that maybe that does get me, just the way I interact with people maybe does get me certain experiences that I may not get if I was a different person, but I can't, or may count me out of things that I would get if I was a different person, but I can't really I've never had anything where someone, <coughs> where it was a gender, other than this. So, what do, where do you, where do you see yourself? Do you, do you, do you guys have these? Are you taking it day by day? Do you see yourself somewhere in ten years? Do you, do you? I mean, what's your long? Do you have any long term, term sort of? Is it like one day at a time, or? Have you pictured yourself what you'll be doing in a few years from now? I mean, is this like your main thing? Um, for me, I mean, yeah, art will always be my 
main thing. It's, um, I'm obsessed. I constantly like feel like I need to be creating things and expressing things and teaching things. Um, so uh, I do teaching, mentoring, um, gallery stuff, street stuff, and I hope to always do all those things. And uh, I don't have a specific game plan. I don't want to do an apparel line kind of like how Santa's doing, like for our clothing and stuff. I think the merchandising is important if you're trying to do like art full time and only art. It's really, really hard to make a living. I mean, selling stuff off the wall in the gallery. Um, and but yeah, forever. I found a minute. Pick me. I'm gonna continue doing leave the positive messages. I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like my stuff, a lot of people hate my stuff, but I'm going to continue doing it. And nothing's going to stop me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I 100% plan to keep doing it, and I would like to keep growing and improving at it and paint more and larger murals, I guess nationally and internationally, and just kind of move forward with it. Is there any, I was hoping maybe to open it up to any questions. If there's any questions, we're just going to have a time for a few. In the back. I have a question. Um, being a female artist and uh, dealing with, um, how you guys kind of said, being this kind of man's world uh, with the art or dominated, let's say that. Um, individually, like, what kind of challenges do you feel are the most prominent? In your field when dealing with guys and how they objectify women, and especially in a professional sense, like in the business uh, arena, um, what are some of the ones that are the most pressing, the ones that bother you the most? And do you think there is any solution to it? Um, and if there was, how do we go about trying to change that for better? Yeah, I'll start. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think. Yeah, it is a problem, definitely, being objectified, um, having, it's hard because a lot of street stuff, you know, you're, it is male dominated if I'm out painting with people, it's usually men, it's usually late at night, it's usually, um, and it's, I'm single, it's, uh, I definitely have to have conversations a lot where it's like, okay, you know, I'm not trying to be like, I'm not trying to hook up with you because I'm not paint with you. And um, I think that's, I don't know, it's, it's, it doesn't feel good. It's kind of like I, I really try to make my art stand out and um, be respected for what I do artistically. Um, and I've definitely been like sexually harassed. I've definitely had um, opportunities taken away from me because I didn't respond the way that um, someone wanted to. Um, and that's happened with, um, with artists that I see all the time, and it sucks. And I think the only way to deal with it is to uh, be assertive and kind of be like, this isn't okay. Um, I've had people tell me that they were gonna ruin my career because they didn't get what they wanted. I mean, I, um, and it, it's hard to know how to deal with that. I mean, it's like, do you call it out? Do I screenshot this and post it for everyone to see and tell them who it is and be a total asshole like that? No, I mean, that's, it, there has to be a way to learn to grow from it and frame it positively and um, be an example to younger girls that, you know, like you don't need to, you don't need to listen to what any guy tells you to do. And if they don't want to mess with your art because you don't like them in a, a way that they want you to, then forget them. You know, there's tons of other opportunities and, um, but it is hard to deal with and it does, um, it can affect, you know, the way you see yourself sometimes and make me overanalyze how I'm presenting myself. Um, I wasn't planning on getting this intimate here. I'm sorry? You don't think that being an artist is any different than you're working with, do you? Absolutely. I mean, it's totally unregulated. It's what? It's totally unregulated in, a, in any kind of job. I mean, if someone is speaking to you, and, like talking about your body, or, um, you know, just straight up saying inappropriate things to you, you you know, they would go to seminars about that, and you can lose your job in art. Wild West, anything goes, you know. Yeah. Um, I didn't hear if you had any paid for that you painted. I do. Um, over I have one over there, and I have a little guy over there. They have hearts on us. <laughs>
just not interested in vandalizing anyone's property. And I, it's not my scene. Um, and I prefer to do everything legally, permitted, ideally getting paid. So if I get arrested for something else, then I will probably continue to do this. <laughs>
drew you to that as opposed to like any other realm? Did it find you or did you find it? Um, I pretty much found street art just by coming out here and just the people who I know and just seeing it and I thought I liked it so I started doing it. I found street art and graffiti as a style that I wanted to emulate and learn how to do. And that's why I picked up spray paint. But I think it was just kind of a series of events that led me to actually being asked to paint a mural. And I did that and felt great about it. Like I love, it's fun to paint. Everyone has different things that they like to do. And for me, I love to paint large walls and hopefully larger and larger and larger in the future. But to then step back and see that and know that that's something that you created, but also something that people will see when they drive down the street, walk to work, and that you've given back to the community in that way. I uh, kind of both. I just kind of started like dabbling in it and then um, just got more and more invitations to do it. And I was like, OK. Uh, and it's super fun. I mean, it's. It's messy, it's big, it's um, it's awesome to drive down the street and be like, I made that, I put that there. And like, I spent two days like on the water sweating and disgusting and made it look how I wanted. And that's, uh, it's really empowering, you know, like you're affecting the landscape of like a major world city. And um, also as far as like getting your art out there, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And it's really, yeah, empowering is a really good word for it. It's like Shadow, I see like her, like I've known them since we all like pretty much started. She started off small, that's when you say you want to go bigger, you've been going bigger. Because yeah. I remember when she first started, it was just a little penguin. And, you know, you started off small and you started to get up. So, good job. Awesome. What is the thing about location? Like, is there, like when I drive around the city, I'm from South LA, and then I go to like Hollywood, and like, the street art is real prominent there. And on their roads and stuff, so is there a reason for that? Like, is there a reason why it's just so more there than versus any other areas? And I'm not sure if you know, but I was just interested. That's something I would think. I think it's all what's available. I mean, I'll paint anything. Like, if I have an opportunity to paint anywhere, you know, I'll go do it. I think it's um, Melrose, there's like some yards and just a lot of opportunity there. That's kind of <coughs> where the scene is, but um, I think if people anywhere in LA reached out to most artists. I mean, you know, we all love painting, so if there's like an opportunity to wall and, you know, it's gonna be good for the community and, you know, Girl Scout Troop wants to come help, I think, uh, yeah. I also think areas kind of rise together in that way. Like Melrose has the murals and has built business around that and around having art kind of fests and people come through and that brings money in. The Arts District has more and more murals and has grown to be kind of a nationally known place for that. And so I think that sometimes there's just murals here and there, but sometimes when there are enough that it reaches a tipping point, that people in businesses realize that, oh, this can be a thing, and now we can capitalize on it, then there will be more and more. And so what you're saying to us that if those opportunities come to you, then you'll be available for those areas as well. Oh, yes, all of us. I'm saying, like, get over it. You feel like it. Oh, okay. Are you? Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, do any of you have a art degree or working towards one? I don't have to take a part to that question. Um, if you don't, do you think that it will give you a niche if you did? I think about that every day. <laughs> How I should go to art school. Um, yeah, I think art school is, it, it can stifle you and like rein you in, but also it's kind of like, um, it's training, you know, and if you can, you have to master techniques you might not want to. Um, and also as far as like networking and being part of a community of established artists that are, have the pedigree or whatever that makes you like valid in the greater world. I think that is valuable, but um, I don't know if it's $100,000 in debt valuable. It's, um, 
it's a hard thing to. It, I think it does legitimize you, though. I mean, I think being like doing street art and graffiti, I mean, it's a, it's a different thing. Um, if you do both, you know, you're super well rounded and um, you lose that like rawness. You know, you don't have the same struggle of like starting at the very bottom and having to like, move through the obstacles or just really claw your way up, which is exciting and frustrating and kind of motivating. I thought about, I was kind of between between jobs when I started painting and I actually thought about going back to school and getting an art degree and went to a few schools around here and interviewed and talked to them and realized that I could, that you can't get a master's in fine art unless you've gotten a bachelor's in fine art. And for now, I've decided that while I think it would help immensely, as Jennifer was saying, to get the skill sets and learn, and learn more about not only the skills that go into making it, but what's come before and to be more understanding of the greater kind of art discussion is something I would love to have and I read books about in my spare time, but I can't, at this point in my life, spend that much money to go back to college and put everything on hold. I did art in high school. And, I mean, that was high school, that was offered to me, but I don't think I'm gonna go and spend money to go take an art class. Yeah. <laughs> but wouldn't that help you? Thank you for standing if you had to stand, and we will be here for a few minutes. <laughs>